We're looking ahead to Friday's action in the NBA. There are nine games on. Let's update you on the injuries. Let's look at streaming options off the waiver wire. And let's check in on our old friend, Michael Bolton. Thanks, Josh. It's Michael Bolton here, and it's time for another episode of the Locked On Fantasy Basketball Podcast. Let's get to it. Let's get to it. Indeed. You are Locked On Fantasy Basketball. Your daily fantasy basketball podcast, part of the Locked On Podcast Network. Hello and welcome to the Locked On Fantasy Basketball Podcast brought to you by Basketball Monster. My name is Josh Lloyd and I'm Vanilla Baby. I'll choke you, but I ain't no killer baby. And I'm also the lead fantasy analyst at BasketballMonster.com. And you can find me on Twitter, as always, at RedRock underscore B-Ball, on TikTok at RedRock underscore B-Ball, and on Instagram at LockedOnFantasyBasketball. Today's episode is brought to you by Prize Picks, the easiest and most exciting way to play daily fantasy sports. Go to PrizePicks.com slash LockedOnNBA, or use the code lowercase, all lowercase, LockedOnNBA, for a first deposit match up to $100. Thank you also for making LockedOn Fantasy Basketball, your first listen every day. We are free and we are available on all platforms. Nine games on Friday. This is the best streaming day that's coming up. We've got a good selection of blokes that we can use. We've got not too many that we're going to have open open roster spots. It's the perfect day. So when you're looking for good options, this is going to be the one to target. Thursday with two games, yuck. Minimal games on Saturday, 11 on Sunday, minimal on Monday. This is a good one. This is the, this is the sweet spot. And I'm going to hit the sweet spot right now and go in to looking at where we're at with injuries across the NBA for these games on Friday. We will start by just looking at the blokes who currently are out. Miles Bridges is still out. Three games to go for the ship bloke himself. Um, we'll see how what, what happens there. We don't have any update on court cases or anything along those lines, but he is out. Um, Terry Rogier remains out as well with his groin issue. I would expect him out for the rest of this week. Monte Morris uh, remains out in Detroit. So does Alec Burks and Jaden Ivey. Jaden Ivey with an illness that is lasting a, uh, a, a decently long time. Yeah, so he's, uh, he's not available. Um, Jose Alvarado and Najee Marshall still out in New Orleans. Derek Rose out in Memphis. Jared Vanderbilt Bar is still sidelined for the Lakers. Quite a few that we don't have full updates on yet. So, of course, keep tuned to all of my shows where I'm putting out this information. As I said there, Burks and Ivey are out. Nikki Claxton is out. Cam Thomas is out for a couple of weeks. A pretty common question. Who's going to take Thomas's usage? Well, nobody. Nobody's going to take all of those shots. It's going to get distributed. So Dinwiddie, we know he's loves, he loves a shot. Um, Bridges is going to get his usage bump back up. Lonnie Walker is going to take shots. Then it's going to be O'Neal. It's going to be Finney Smith. It's just going to be a smattering of blokes. Dennis Smith is going to jump in there as well. Like maybe you could add Lonnie Walker, especially because Cam Johnson, uh, well, actually that's not true because Cam Johnson coming up soon is going to be back. So I'm not sure I'd be super into adding Lonnie, and he's quite an empty scorer. But Thomas is out for a couple of weeks. Not not really a huge surprise there. Claxton still remains out. Uh, Kenrich Williams is out for the Thunder. Um, CJ McCullum is out for the Pelicans, obviously with his um, pneumothorax. What other injuries do we have updates on? Devin Booker is not officially doubtful, but I am listing him doubtful because uh, when Vogues was asked the other day about his status yesterday, he was like, yeah, he's progressing, but you know, we don't have a firm timetable. For me, that means he's not going to play on Friday. We will find out. I'm not officially going to rule him out, but I'm going to say it's pretty unlikely that he is going to um uh, going to be out there. Maxi Kleber is officially doubtful. And then there's a bunch of uh, statuses that we don't have yet, and that is Zion Williamson, who missed the last game for the birth of his child, I believe. Maybe he misses another one. It's not expected to be a long-term issue. Xavier T. Illman has missed the last two games with knee soreness, so we're having him questionable here. Ben Simmons is officially questionable with a hip issue that cost him the last game. Oh, I actually just got the update there on, on Tillman. Tillman is officially out, so that's another Biombo game, and that bumps the value of old mate Santi Aldama there too. Herbalife Jones is questionable after missing the last game with a fibula injury. Um, if he is out and Zion is out, well, we saw what happens. Robinson Earl and Daniels and Hawkins, and they get smacked by 50. So, yeah, we've got a, an idea of how that plays out in that scenario. What else have we got cracking? Derek Lively is officially questionable with an illness that cost him the last game. We hope that's not too far away. They actually just did, the, the Grizzlies also just added uh, Zaire Williams to the injury report as questionable. And Jake LaRavia is doubtful. Not that they have any faith in LaRavia at all. Um, Jaron Fox, Anthony Davis, Jackson Hayes, and Trey Lyles. We don't have updates on them. 
I would think that Fox and Davis have got to be close to playing. Lyles, we're just not we're just getting day by day updates on that. Um, when he re- look, their whole rotation got um, turned ass over tits last game, so we'll see exactly what it means. Like Vazenkov was out, and we saw Kessler Edwards play. We saw Javale and Gee out of there. Alex Lynn was in. What happens when Trey Lyles returns? I, I don't know. That that rotation still got beaten. Um, that rotation is a little bit uh, all over the shop there. Cam Johnson has been upgraded to probable, so that is very good news there. I don't expect, coming off two soft tissue injuries, that Jono is going to come back in and play a huge minute straight away. He is worth rostering, absolutely much more so in category leagues versus points leagues, but it's just going to be a bit of a slow ramp up. But it is, I don't know if fortuitous is the right word, but Thomas going out, Johnson coming back in, is probably going to be able to establish Cam Johnson back in the starting lineup. And then where Thomas fits when he returns, he's still... A, a, whereas it felt like it was going to be hard to take Thomas out of the starting group, it might be that he doesn't get back in now if Johnson and Claxton both return before Cam Thomas uh, is back. So we'll see how all that goes. A couple of other probable statuses. Gordon Haywood popped up. You never like to see him on the injury report, but he's dealing with a hamstring issue. Just sit him out. Like Just sit him out. If he's like, it's Gordon Haywood, mate. Like, if you've got a hamstring injury, just sit him out. But he's listed probable. And then Nico Batum is probable with a finger issue that he suffered in that last game against the Celtics. He returned, played through it. So we don't think that there's anything uh, sinister there. But if Batum is out, then maybe those 20 plus minutes that he was getting, we get some of that pumped into Robert Covington. Giggity. All right. What else do we need to look at? Well, it's time to drop a stream of the day on you guys. 10-team category league, I think it is D'Anthony Melton. His minutes and his role are relatively secure. And at some point, he's going to shoot better than 11%. And he'll have a night where he goes 15 points, 77% shooting with two threes, four rebounds, five assists, two steals, two blocks. So it's going to happen at some point. It's been a very rough start, but he has been dropped. I would be at least looking to stream him in. And in 12s, I would, I would roster him. For 12-team categories and points leagues, I think Marcus Sasser is worth a look with Ivy and Burks and Bogdanovich and um, Morris all still out. He's going to get tons of minutes. He probably won't shoot 57% every game. We know this, but he's going to get lots of opportunities to do it. So that gives him good streaming value, Marcus Sasser. For 14-teamers, Santi Aldama, who played like 24 minutes last game. He's moving into like, he's a 12-team stream option as well. I'm not convinced he's going to remain must roster, but for now we stream him in, especially with Tillman out once more. And then for deeper leagues, we go back to Memphis and the duck, Luke Kennard. He's playing a lot of minutes, Kennard. He's rostered like nowhere. He's available in over 90% of leagues. And honestly, he has some value in 12-team formats. 15 points, four threes is absolutely a reasonable median outcome expectation for Kennard. And that, that works in a 12-team league. So the fact that he's like 94 or 95% available means that in all these leagues, he's going to be there and you're going to, I think, have a pretty strong opportunity to get some value out of him. Today's episode is brought to you by Jace Medical and the Jace case. We know that there are issues in the world with supply chains with medications. There's also disaster situations, which we all want to avoid, obviously, pretty obvious, yeah? But you want to be prepared for this stuff. So you've got the Jace case, which is the five emergency antibiotics that you can have at home in case something strikes and you need to use them. That's what Jace, the Jace case is. But they've also brought it in where you can bring other medications into the mix. What's well, like streaming medications off the waiver wire? Add them into your Jace case, year supply of things that you use daily, just in case there are interruptions. You don't want to have to saunter into a pharmacy, get your prescription and go, I'll have one of those, big fella. And they go, sorry, mate, it's out of stock for the next couple of months. You go, what am I supposed to do? And you go on a scavenger hunt around the world to try and find your medications. No, with Jace Medical, you can always have these things on hand for the th- for items that you need, including generic versions of erectile dysfunction medications of Viagra and Cialis. So go to jacemedical.com, use the code locked on, and you can save 20 bucks off. Go to Jace Medical, J-A-S-E Medical.com, and use that code locked on. Let's let's bring in to see what is on my radar for the games. First of all, we're looking at Charlotte. They're going to Washington, and there is actually a lot that is on my radar here because this is an annoying bunch of teams. Mark Williams' minutes are a little bit all over the place. He's still producing, but we thought that we would get 28 to 30 out of him every night, and it's not that Big Dick Nick's cutting in. It's just that they're just doing different stuff. And against the Wizards, considering they have no 
big man that backs up Dan Gafford, be a little worried about Williams's minutes here. And they go small again with more uh, God of Hammers, JT Thor. On the wizard side, of course, of course, we want to watch the most unserious man in the in the world, um, baddie connoisseur, Jordan Poole. Can this man take it serious? Can Wes Unsell play him more than 20 minutes? Can we get some level of production? Honestly, for as shit as it's been for Poole, the production hasn't actually been as bad as how bad it has looked and how bad the minutes have been. But just can we roll here? We don't need Cam, Cole, Thomas, Cole, Kuzma, Thomas, whatever his name is, <laughs> taking every shot in the world. Let's see what Poole can bring, yeah? But otherwise, man, this, this team is disastrous. In terms of streams, we do look at Richards, who can bring you maybe eight rebounds, 60% shooting, a couple of blocks. That's useful. And then uh, DeLon Wright. Now, I don't know what to make of DeLon Wright because when he played 26 minutes last game and four the game before that, Landry Shamit in and out of the rotation, Ryan Rollins, Patrick Baldwin, Eugene Omarui, they're running 13 blokes every night. So if DeLon is on, we're, we're, we're rolling. If DeLon plays five minutes, then we have no use in it. So you can take a flyer on it, but, you know, it might not happen, which is the, uh, I guess it might not happen is the, the tagline for the Wizards season. The next game is the Sixers and the Pistons. I am watching the wave pool, DeAnthony Melton. I'd like to see Nick Nurse, famous minutes pump legend Nick Nurse, play a very good defensive player and very good player in general, more than 28 minutes. When you see Nurse and rotations, you just would expect that a starter is going to play 37. But no, we've got to pump five minutes into Cork Mars and get Paddy Beverly out for 14 minutes. So let's see if anything changes there. On the Piston side of things, I do want to watch uh, passport legend Jalen Duran because he started out on fire. He's had some ankle issues. He's dropped back a little bit. He's still performing really well, but it has been a bit of a drop-off. So is he going to be a 33-minute guy or is he going to settle at 28 so we can watch Marvin Bagley give away leads when he's on the court? Let's see how that all works. Can someone fact check me on this? Have the Pistons won a game since Alec Burks got hurt? I don't think they have. Check it for me. Bobby Covington is an interesting stream option. Um, we know that if he gets 20 minutes, he'll pump out enough value to be useful for most leagues, but I'm not feeling super confident in that. And then, of course, on the Detroit side, Marcus Sasser is there. Killian Hayes, also a pretty good stream. Both of these guys are going to play 30-plus minutes. And if you're in deeper leagues, shout out to my man, Stanley Amude, who you can uh, add, and he's going to have opportunities as well, given the amount of players that are currently absent for the Pistons. The next game we look at is the Nets, the Celtics, We've already talked about the fact that Cam Johnson is returning, but Thomas is out, Simmons is questionable, Claxton is out. I want to see Spencer Dinwiddie, who has been... Ro- I don't know what that word was going to be. It was going to be a weird word, but I'm not going to say it because it wasn't actually a real English word. He's been dreadful. That's what I'm trying to say for Spencer Dinwiddie. His minutes have been low, even with Cam Thomas out last game. Is he moving into droppable territory? Like, yes, he is. He's not quite there yet, but let's see how they utilize him here. And then for the Celtics, I want to watch Jalen Brown because he has been very up and down. And I am a little worried with the way the usage is getting distributed on this team where it seems to go back and forward between their four, five guys every game, that that was where Brown's value really lied. He's always a subpar free throw guy, not a steals or assists player or a blocks guy. Was okay at field goals, but it did need usage. He did need to be a 26, 27 point scorer. And I don't think it's going to happen. Let's see if there's any more clarity on the offensive hierarchy in this game. In terms of stream options, Donnie Finney-Smith is still available everywhere, and he shouldn't be. Ever since Claxton's gone down, he has been a 12-team league player, and Claxton is still down, so Finney-Smith still remains a 12-team league player. And I think maybe people get a little confused. He hasn't been replacing Cam Johnson. He's been replacing Nick Claxton. He's been playing center. So I would have him over Royce O'Neal, but they are stream options. Like he is, a, They're both stream options. And for the Celtics, uh, Al Horford's available in like 60% of leagues, rightfully so. But that puts him onto the stream radar uh, here for this game. Next up, we look at the uh, Minnesota Timberwolves and the San Antonio Spurs. I do want to see Jaden McDaniels because his minutes game log has been a wild ride. It's like 20, 21, 22, 43, 25. His production in most of those games has been sort of as we expect. A very good real-life player who doesn't translate to fantasy. Talked with Danny Bezbris today on the Mailbag Show. And he's like, I actually think he might be a droppable player. And I'm not that far away from it. Like, he doesn't produce at a high level for fantasy. And often, when you get shallower, streaming has more value. Let's see what he does. On the Spurs side, I do want to see Trey Jones, who is also, to me, like his brother in Washington, very much on the cut line. Not reliable production, not reliable minutes. He can't shoot threes. He's an assist specialist. Honestly, 
with the way that they're, he's being used at the moment, and I don't even know that he should be used more. He is not fantastic, and he is not a great prospect. I think he's a solid, solid player. You get almost the same, if not more, out of Killian Hayes than Trey Jones at the moment. In terms of stream guys, Kyle Anderson, that's probably right for him. Under 50% rostered, you can stream him in and you, and you drop him down. If someone gets hurt, he becomes more permanent. And then Jeremy Sohan's actually available in more leagues now. He's dropped down under 45% rostered. He has been, he was better last game. He's been up and down. He Look, he was a guy we grab. We always want, hey, the young guy, starting point guard, let's see what happens. Hasn't happened great. You can move on if you want. But he's definitely in the mix here for us as a streaming option. Next up, the Pelicans and the Rockets. Jordan Hawkins is going to be up and down. That's what happens when your game relies, and that's a little bit of a, a word of caution on Marcus Sasser, even though I've talked about him as a stream of the day. When your game relies upon shooting, that you're going to be quite variable. It's like when your game relies upon defensive stats, you can be quite variable in levels of production. When your game relies upon shooting at a high level, if you don't produce, or if they don't go in, then you're not doing much. Now, I do think that Hawkins should be rostered in all leagues at this point. He is going to get the bulk of the minutes with CJ out. Daniels will get a bump here if Herb Jones is sidelined. But we want to see Hawkins and how he looks and how they, how they utilize minutes-wise. And I also want to watch Tari Eason. Love Tari Eason. Where do they get enough minutes? Do they just do they take Jay Sean Tate out? Because he played 27 minutes last game, Tate. And Yudoka apparently loves him. So that's the... if Look, if Eason got the 27 minutes that Tate got last game, we'd be all over him. But I'm not sure he is. So we just want to see how Eason gets used. In terms of streams, well, Eason's there. And Dyson Daniels, especially if Herbalife Jones is sidelined. We'll get Daniels starting and bringing some assists and steals to us. We're looking at the Jazz and the Grizzlies. We know that Walker Kessler will be out with that elbow injury. Kelly Olynyk only played 20 minutes last game off the bench, but he had five fouls. I think he'll move into like a Mo Wagner sort of role where he's a 25 to 26 minute player off the bench. And that is absolutely a 12 team league player. Don't worry about Asha Baji starting. Just look at Olenek as a good stream option there. And then on the Grizzlies, it is Santi Aldama who gets another opportunity with Tillman out. We get one fewer opportunity to assess how they use the four big men then in, in Jackson, Aldama, Tillman, and Biombo. But this is an opportunity for more minutes for Aldama. And they are, they are both the stream guys. They're available in over 50% of leagues. Aldama in over 80%. Uh, Olenek in over 60%. They're both streamable options for your games on, uh, on the old... What is today? Yeah, Friday. On the, uh, on Friday. Today's episode is also brought to you by Prize Picks. Prize Picks is the largest daily fantasy sports platform in North America. It is the easiest and most exciting way to play DFS as well. It's just you against numbers. Don't worry about setting up lineups with salary caps. Don't worry about battling against people with um, spreadsheets and algorithms and all the time in the world to beat you. It's just you looking at player projections and then just saying, well, more or less. That's the simple stuff that you do over on Prize Picks. Also, you can win up to 25 times your money. Get those six uh, more or less picks in. You're good. Get them, hit them all 25 times back. That's all you need to do. Place your entry. Easy. Under 60 seconds as well. You can look at like Luka Doncic and points. And it might say 32. And you go, well, I'm going to take, take less on that. Or you'll see LeBron at like seven assists. And you go, I think more for LeBron today. So looking at all those things, you put them together. Bang, there you go. Price picks entry done. Go to pricepicks.com slash locked on NBA. Use the code locked on NBA and you can get a first deposit match up to $100. Go to pricepicks.com slash locked on NBA. The code is locked on NBA and then get a first deposit match up to $100. Price picks is daily fantasy made easy. Let us, um, let us bring into the next game that is on my radar. For Friday's nine games, it is the Clippers and the Mavericks. Let's, yeah, we're all watch, watching this. So I could put James Harden's name here. I could put Russell Westbrook's. I could put Kawhi Leonard's. We all want to see that. I don't want to see a game where Russell Westbrook's taking more shots than Kawhi Leonard ever again in my life. How the Clippers figure this out is going to be really key. And I think it might take a while because A, there are egos involved and Ty Lue is known as a player's coach. Man, he started Marcus Morris for three years when he shouldn't have. So... It's a little worrying. It probably does open up a buy low for Kawhi. But Kawhi just needs to sit Russ down and go, bro, settle down. Let me take the shots. So watching Harden's integration there and what it means for Westbrook and for Kawhi is key. For the Dallas side, Derek Jones Jr., he's pushing up. Now, he is not rostered anywhere, right? Like no leagues. 10, 12, 14, 16. I think he's like 3%. But his minutes are pushed up. 
He's getting blocks. A 30-minute starter who can block two shots a game on the wing has to be on your radar. I'm not saying that you need to add Derek Jones in 12-team leagues. I have not added him in a 12-team league yet. But Josh Green's not taking this spot. Olivier Maxon's Prosper, I don't know where he is. He's not getting any minutes. And initially, we were seeing Jones play 20. Now he's playing 30. And the blocks are coming. So, I'm not saying that it's even a luxury stash because I don't know that he turns into a regular 12-team league player. But if I'm in 14s, if I'm in 16s, if I'm in anything deeper, I'm grabbing Derek Jones. He's obviously a stream target for us. And then on the Clipper side, it's probably Norm Powell, but I'm not all that excited about it. And obviously, Bones Highland's value has uh, absolutely tanked, which is not a gigantic surprise. The next game is the Thunder and the Kings. I'm just going to double check if we've got any more updates on this. We do not. Um, all right. What I want to watch here is Josh Giddy because it has been bad. You do not need to drop Josh Giddy yet, but I am... And I couldn't have said this at all at any point before today. Well, I said it yesterday, maybe. I am a little worried that it might end up a timeshare with him and Kaysan Wallace turning into a Kaysan Wallace takes the role. I thought Wallace might come for Dort's minutes, but I don't know about that anymore. Wallace has been great. Giddy has struggled. And yeah, we we need to watch this one really closely. We also need to watch Keegan Murray. Now, no one is coming for Keegan Murray's role, I'm pretty sure. He just cannot shoot at all. I know he had like a wrist or finger problem in, in the preseason. That's carrying across. But you know, I just, I, I never believed in him being this high usage guy who was going to generate defensive stats. I didn't expect him to become this trash of a shooter and it will bounce back. But we need to see it. The streams, Kaysan Wallace. Like I, I've got him on my Locked On Fantasy Basketball Bowl roster. We've got the extended rosters in that. He's there. He's been sitting there for a while. I'm not moving on from him. He's getting 20 a night, and I am interested to see where this goes. And then for the Kings, while Kevin Hurd, a fan of pants, is not a must-roster player, he is a pretty good stream, especially if De'Aaron Fox is out, which at this point, that has not been updated. What's on my radar for the Lakers and the Suns? Well, we don't know about Devin Booker, and we don't know about Anthony Davis. They're key ones. Don't expect Booker to play. Davis, I think, probably will will play, depending on how his um, penis spasms go. Christian Wood... Absolutely revenged himself against the the Rockets. Just a massive revenge game against them last time as he had zero points and four usage in a start in place of Anthony Davis. Yeah. I, I think I've already... I think I've won the revenge game debate. So I probably don't need to keep mentioning it. I think I've won. I think I've proven that enough. I've won that one. That's done. The next one for me is contract years, which I think I've won also, but we'll keep going with that. Uh, Christian Wood. He was providing good stream value. And with Davis and Hayes are out again, along with Vanderbilt Bar. He's at least worth considering in that sort of a scenario. But Rui Hachimura is back, so that might impact Wood a little bit. So let's see how they use him. And then for the Suns, Bradley Beal, which is good to have him back. Now, he shot 25%. That's not going to be as bad as that most nights. But let's see how he looks. Is he moving freely? How do they run the offense through him? Or is it just going to be the Grayson Allen show again? In terms of streams, we are looking at Torian Prince as an available guy. Not Wood, because he's above my uh, roster percentage threshold. And Grayson Allen is a stream option if, as I expect, Evan Booker uh, remains sidelined. Let's look at some two-for-one options. Who can we get that plays the Friday, Saturday back-to-back? It's the Celtics. And we, do, we, we would expect that Al Horford does not play both of those games, meaning someone is going to step up. Now, a guy that's already in the rotation and pushing 20 minutes every night, I think you know where I'm going on this, it's Sam Hauser. I don't know that they would start him well, they wouldn't actually because Horford comes off the bench. But like Luke Cornett gets a boost, but Hauser probably gets a boost as well. And he might be a stream. Now, Horford, you can stream in for one of the games, but Cornett, Hauser, they're going to be guys to pay attention to if you're looking to get the two for one, which you you might not be. And I said this at the start of the week. Someone left a comment on it on the video yesterday. I don't really understand the chunks in the two for one. If I've got four ads and there's these games, that, that, yeah, I, I understand that. This is if you use some of those other ads for longer-term stashes like Keontae George or you're looking ahead to next week or sometimes there's just a guy that's too good that gets dropped that doesn't actually fit your streaming schedule for the week. You use some of those ads for that. We're still looking to maximize games played per ad because I don't think you should devote, especially early in the season, every single waiver move just for streaming. Sometimes it's for taking a chance on someone when uh, another manager gets frustrated or taking a uh, flyer stash. Maybe that is Derek Jones. Maybe it is Marcus Sasser, right? Taking 
a sort of flyer stash on someone can use up those waiver ads. Let's um, let's get chunky with it here because we're looking at the next five days and over the next five days, there are um, three lower volume days. Friday, Saturday, not Sunday, and Monday. Tuesday's borderline. It's 10, da- 10 games, which is reverse of what it usually is, but we'll look at the three days. So there's only one team that plays three games over the next five days on the quality days, and that is the Celtics. The problem there is that all their good players are going to be rostered, and the only the good player who's not rostered is Al Horford. He's only going to play two games. So let's talk about some value. The Kings and Malik Monk have two games, so you know Kings players, especially if Fox remains out. You got Monk, who's who is the guy, but then it's Herda. Maybe it is. It's not Keon Ellis, but maybe it is. Maybe it's Davion. I don't know. But Monk's the guy there. Horford with two games out of three is interesting. Sam Howes is going to play three, and one of them is going to be without Horford. That helps. Karis LeVert and the Cavs have two games, two quality games over the next five nights. Jay Crowder and the Bucks have two games over the next five nights that are quality games. Shout out to them sitting Damian Lillard today. Uh, and Kevin Herter. Just again, just onto the Bucks, right? We all, not, that's not true. Some people thought that this NBA resting policy would have this marked change. It won't. It never would. This is a Thursday, right here, where we are. National TV game, Damian Lillard is not playing. Is it a real injury? Yes, it probably is something real. Is that anything that's going to keep him out long-term? Probably not. Because the problem is back-to-backs. That is, has any player rested or sat suspiciously for a game that hasn't been a back-to-back? I would say the answer is, I'm almost certain the answer is no. If you've got an example of it, drop it in the comments. But I think the answer is very clearly no. Anyway, Jay Crowder's got two and Kevin Herter has got two games over the next five days on quality days. So let's just dig in a little bit more to streaming options. 10-team streams, these are all available in 35% plus of leagues. Marcus Sasser, helped by all of the absences in his hot shooting, obviously. Herb Jones is questionable, but he would be a stream guy. Uh, Denny Avdia is 57% rostered. We saw him cool off last game, and and that that was part of why he was surging so high, but he's still worth looking at. D'Anthony Melton's at 61%. uh, Jordy Hawkins at 46%. And then uh, Santi Aldama at 17% is a strong stream there. Also, what about 12-teamers? We're looking at guys who are 60% available or more. So Sasa and Aldama. We've got Kelly Olynyk at 32%. We've got Killian Hayes at 40%. We've got Kyle Anderson at 39 And then the speaker himself, Keontae George. I would have thought more people would have gone and grabbed Keontae. He's at 13% rostered. Well, I guess what that shows to me is that either people don't listen to me People who watch the show don't listen to what I'm saying, which is absolutely fine. Do that. Like I, I, I got no problem with that. Or just not, not as many people as I would hope are watching the show in terms of the general fantasy basketball landscape, which I want more to do it. Because the fact that a starting rookie point guard who had nine assists in his first start and played 31 minutes is up to 13% is a pretty wildly low number, I would have thought. I would, I would have thought. Maybe they... And again, I guess some of it is people say, oh, he didn't score any points, so I'm not adding him. And honestly, I do think that is a factor. Deeper league streams, these guys are all available in over 80% of leagues. So we've got Aldama, Keontae George, Luke Kennard. Look, Aldama and George have spots available on 12-team rosters. More interested in George than Aldama, but they're both available. Luke Kennard at 5, Torian Prince at 7%, Zaire Williams at 10, although he is now questionable, and then Dyson Daniels at, at uh, 10% as well. He'll get a boost if we see Herb and or Zion out and he be, probably pushes up into like 12-team or maybe 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 more 14, but probably a 10-team league stream option. Lastly, we'll look at some points league stream options. Um, these guys are all available in 50% of leagues or more. So Jordan Hawkins, Marcus Sasser, Santi Aldama, Malik Monk, Jeremy Sohan, and Killian Hayes. And that, guys, will do it for me today. Don't forget, follow this podcast on Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, Spotify, on the Odyssey app, and on YouTube. Leave your comments down below. Thumb it up, bell, subscribe. We're done. Thank you so much for listening, everyone. See ya.